How does geothermal energy work? And why are we not all using it? As renewables occupy an increasingly larger role in our energy mixes, several issues such as intermittency and storage will rise. Geothermal energy can solve many of these issues and could prove to be an important source of electricity and heating. What is geothermal energy? Geothermal energy comes from the heat inside the Earth and has been used for millennia for heating, bathing, cooking and now generating electricity. Geothermal energy can be considered as renewable as the heat flow from the Earth is abundant. How is it used? Well, currently, geothermal sources are used for electricity generation and heating. When used as direct heat, it is predominantly used to heat up residential and commercial areas. There are also some uses in agriculture, for greenhouse heating, and also in industry. For electricity generation, we can convert the thermal energy from the Earth into electrical energy. So how do we extract it? Well, certain areas will have excellent conditions where hot water reservoirs form underground. The hot water is pumped from the earth through a well under high pressure, and when it reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped which converts the hot water into steam, which spins a turbine connected to a generator. Then, the steam is cooled off in a cooling tower to be condensed back to water and pumped back underground. Three different types of procedures exist that use slightly different ways to extract heat. There is dry steam power plants, flash steam, and binary power plants. The binary power plant emits the least emissions of the three and also works best with lower temperatures as a secondary liquid with a lower boiling point is used. This means the liquid can be converted into steam with lower temperatures. When the conditions of permeability aren't optimal, new methods called enhanced geothermal systems or EGS can be used where they artificially create the cracks in the ground by injecting water. This could potentially make most places on Earth adequate for geothermal energy extraction. So in which countries is geothermal energy abundant? Certain areas have prime conditions where the heat rises through relatively permeable rock with many cracks. Many times, this can be later seen on the surface through hot springs or geysers. This map shows geothermal hotspots around the world. In terms of production, the main actors are the nine countries on the graph, with the US, Indonesia, and the Philippines being the largest producers. Iceland is a prime example of a country with favorable geological characteristics and has the highest production per capita. Here, geothermal energy heats up 90% of homes and accounts for around 30% of electricity generation. So what are the advantages compared to other sources? While geothermal plants generally require much less space in terms of physical land than fossil fuel plants and even solar panel farms. The amount of water needed per unit of energy generated is also lower than coal, nuclear and natural gas, especially for binary cycle plants. Geothermal energy also provides national energy security, as its price does not fluctuate like oil and gas prices and it does not suffer from variability and intermittency such as wind and solar. Its capacity factor, which is how often a plant runs at maximum power, is between 80 and 90%, which is higher than all other energy sources and on par with nuclear, making it much more reliable than other renewables. Its operational costs are also often lower than other energy sources. Finally, another advantage is that geothermal heating can be employed locally at a small scale and can therefore decrease grid dependence. So are there any issues? Well, firstly, geothermal energy is very geography dependent. To have easier access to the heat from the Earth's crust, regions at the edges of tectonic plates and near volcanoes are preferred. Economic feasibility is also a major obstacle. High upfront costs, high costs and risk of exploration, research, resource discovery, and especially drilling, as well as a long payback period makes its expansion as a leading energy source much slower. I put a useful video in the description that compares costs of different energies including geothermal. Also, the equipment can be heavily affected by acidic gases. Some research shows that water quality in the area can be affected if acidic effluent is discharged and not controlled for. 
Technically, geothermal power plants can have some minor emissions such as hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide, but compared to fossil fuels, it is negligible. Moreover, some studies report some induced seismic activity from the drilling, as well as increasing the risk of landslides. Finally, if extraction rates are higher than replenishment rates, then the long-term sustainability of the process can be questioned. So how can we make it better? Since the drilling is the most expensive phase, more efficient equipment, novel technologies and better training will decrease costs in the future. When it comes to emissions, absorption techniques are available for removal of hydrogen sulfide and if a binary plant is used, the emissions are close to zero. Better environmental information on geothermal energy can also decrease local opposition to these projects, which is often fueled by inaccurate information. So one could say that geothermal energy is currently underexplored and underfunded, as it has a high potential that could be seized through higher research and investment. It clearly won't be the main source of energy anytime soon, but in certain regions it could be extremely beneficial. So what do you think about the future of geothermal energy? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to learn more about climate and energy related topics, don't forget to subscribe.